Are we on? Okay. Uh, thanks for putting me up right after that awesome speech. Uh, <laughs> I am, uh, I'm not a professional speech giver. I am uh, not a professional educator. Uh, many of my students are here in the class today, and I do thank you for coming. Uh, I do want to do a few things with you today. I'm, I, I, want, I wrote a whole speech and I prepared uh, really three, the, the toughest assignment I got was write a biography. And so I sat down and I, I said, okay, well, this is great. I get to tell these people how awesome I am and all the great things I did through the course of my life and how I conquered all these villains and, and uh, overcame so many challenges. And I started writing some things down and, I, and then I wrote a speech to accompany it and I, and I sat back and I started to read it and I went, I really don't like this guy <laughs> very much. That's not me. That's just some of the things that have happened to me or the things that I've done. Uh, so I, I decided to start over, and I decided to come and speak to you from the heart. And uh, uh, first, before I get started, I, I, I do need your help with some things. I'd like to connect with you a little bit. Um, I'm just going to kind of go like this and just participate with me and go along. It's kind of fun. And just when I do, just lean that way a little bit, and I'll go like this, just come back and lean this way. And I'll go like this and just stand up, and we, we'll proceed. Okay, so just lean with me. All right, let's go back this way. All right, just stand up. Stretch out for a second, and sit back down. Now, no matter what happens, I can report to my class next semester that I swayed and uplifted the audience at the <laughs> TED conference. So thank you. <laughs> Good night. <No. laughs> um, my, I, what I really wanted to speak to you about is, is something that I think everybody here has touched upon, and, and I think uh, our, our video touched upon it quite a bit too. Um, I have been found guilty in my life of chasing dreams that weren't my own, of following paths that others provided for me of kind of following the path of least resistance in certain decisions that I've made. And uh, through that, some extraordinary things have happened. And through that, uh, some great amount of sadness occurs in your life as well. And I'd like to talk about uh, both sides of that, of that coin. Uh, I called it, I thought I was very creative and original. I said, this is the shackles of freedom. And I said, OK, well, this, is, this is what happens to you when you bind yourself to something that's not what you want. And so I got on Google, and I Googled it, and there were like 18 books and articles written called The Shackles of Freedom. And, and so I said, OK, well, that's not going to be the title, I guess. So I said, maybe what I'll talk about is you know, forging ahead, laying your own path, establishing your own thoughts about how you want to be, and persevering. And then I thought, well, I'm not Tony Robbins. I don't have the ability to, to convey some message of positivity to you. And so I have boiled it down. And, and what I'd like to do is share with you some of the experiences that are extraordinary in my life that, that taught me a lot of lessons. Uh, I was a, a young guy when I graduated high school. I had average test scores and a decent GPA. I got a volleyball scholarship at 17 to go play. I played at Brigham Young uh, University, and uh, they were big guys. I remember showing up the first day to practice, and I was 17. I was the same height and about 155 pounds, and there were these giant men uh, just jumping, touching 11, 12 feet, and hitting balls harder than I'd ever seen. And, and I, I was this kid from Dallas, Texas, that uh, had never been around that. And I was intimidated beyond belief. And I, I, I went, and I played. And I, I'll, I'll never forget the very first ball that was set to me to hit in, in tryouts or the first day of practice. I went and I jumped and missed. I, I took a swing. I, I hit half the ball. I hit the net. I fell down. I mean, it was, it was the most embarrassing moment in my life. But it's one of the best things that could have happened to me because those seniors that were there that day came and picked me up and said, don't worry about it. Come on, you can be on my team. And we proceeded to, to move forward. Uh, that miss was a huge moment for me because when I missed, I realized, you know what? I'm going to miss a lot in life. And I'm going to take swings at things. And I'm going to do things. Why am I so nervous? Why am I nervous right now speaking to you about what I want to say? Really, this speech for me was about saying to myself, the things that I needed to hear. And so I appreciate you guys listening to me for a little bit. Uh, I subsequently got married and uh, married into a very wealthy family that uh, lived here in, in the Rancho Santa Fe area. And basically was told as a young guy, get your degree, work hard, the rest is taken care of for you. Find a productive way to live your life. Well, I didn't come from that. I'd never thought like that. 
I'd never thought I wasn't going to have to go and earn to take care of my family and save so someday my kids could go to school. And here I was at 22, 23, 24 years old with this opportunity presented to me uh, that I was unprepared to accept. And so I thought to myself, geez, what does everybody say? What do all the businessmen and people say to me when they retire they're going to do? What, what do they say they're going to do? Most of them say to me, you know what, I'm going to go teach. I'm going to go be a teacher. And so I thought, what a great way to spend my life and to spend my 20s. I'll, I'll get to go be a teacher. And so I went to, uh, I got a job as a, uh, a teacher's aide slash P, uh, PE coach slash crossing guard uh, in Rancho Santa Fe. And I worked with those kids there for 10 years, and, uh, or uh, seven years, and, and uh, coached at Poway High School for a varsity volleyball program. A lot of fun, neat experience. But one of the things that it did for me is it opened my mind to what was out there. In this particular part of the nation, and we are TEDx SDSU, there is a lot of retired intellectual capital that is bored and that needs a place to put their energy, and that, has, that these are people, men and women, who have dominated their specific industry, who have conquered and, and uh, built beautiful, wonderful businesses, and now are tired of playing golf and tennis and traveling. And here I was at 24 years old, and I'll never forget sitting in a poker game I got invited to uh, at a table where the net worth was probably well over a billion dollars. And I'm making, uh, I think it was $12 an hour at the time <laughs> at the school I was working at. And sitting there going, you know what? I've got to pay attention to what's happening to me, to me right now. I have to pay attention to the stories and the lessons that these people have to teach me. And so I began to form friendships with people that were 30, 40, 50 years older than me and that had been through quite a bit in their life and that had a lot of stories and a lot of energy. And I began to think, you know, they have all this energy, they have all this time, and yet they don't have anywhere to put it. How can we sync it together? And at that moment, I decided that I was gonna start to work towards an MBA and uh, develop some expertise so that the opportunities that were being placed in front of me at that time uh, could be fully utilized. And so that I could maybe think of something just smart enough to help it all work out and, and hopefully do some things and forge my own path. So I began that process. I came to state. Uh, I had moved to Nashville, Tennessee. My wife was a songwriter at the time, and, and Nashville is, is full of talent, amazing and wonderful talent. And I uh, spent a long time out there, and I fly back and forth to get my MBA here at San Diego State. So I'm proud to say I'm an A-list member on Southwest Airlines. I don't have to check in 24 hours previous. I'm that guy that's in the front of the line that you look at and go, gosh, who is that guy? Um, I, I enjoy flying. I enjoy traveling. When you're alone on a plane or in a car, you have a lot of time to think. You have a lot of time to kind of fill your brain. So I either sit in silence or I listen to uh, nonfiction books on tape. I like to listen to history and, and uh, uh, business leaders and, and uh, uh, sports athletes tell stories about their lives and hopefully grab some from, from what they're doing and apply it to my own. When I went to Nashville, I, uh, I ran into a really strange opportunity. I had met all these great and wonderful musicians and artists and, and heads of, of, of the uh, music industry. And downtown Nashville is a lot like Austin, Texas, or it's a lot like Gaslamp, where it's live music all night long, every night until 4 in the morning. And it is amazing how much talent is there. And so people go downtown and they congregate on, on the strip downtown on Broadway. And I remember meeting a guy named John Rich. And John Rich was with Big and Rich, and they're a country band. And he actually won the Celebrity Apprentice this uh, last year. Uh, he's got a cowboy hat, and he's a, a diminutive guy. And uh, he had this idea to go to downtown Nashville and build a, a place for him and his, his friends to have a great club and, and private environment to hang out and be in the city without being uh, mobbed by the crowds. And he tried to do it for a year or two, but with his, his er, hectic life, he, he couldn't manage it, he couldn't keep it going. And so uh, in talking to him, uh, I, I made an offer that I'd buy him out. And he kind of laughed and said, well, you know, it's not really a money maker. It's not something that, that does any good. And he, uh, you know, we came to an agreement. I bought this club 
And my, I had a concept of saying, you know, I'm going to make this a luxury box on Broadway. I'm going to make this a place where people can go and hang out downtown and be safe and, and share experiences with each other without being harassed by everybody else and, and, and in a safe environment. And so my partners and I began to build this thing up. We did no advertising. We put no signage up. We did it all organically and grew it through our network of friends. And uh, we, we found many, many of the, the local celebrities and acts and athletes and brought them in to be members of our club. And it's a really neat thing. You walk in and it's this little office building and you just put your thumb on the wall and it scans it and it opens and you go into this paradise that looks down over Broadway. And so it was pretty exciting for me because all of a sudden here I am, it was, I guess I was 30 at the time, and, and I own a private club in downtown Nashville. I, I didn't want to be in that kind of business. I never anticipated for a second that I would ever be in, in that industry. It was never something that came my way, uh, that, I, that I thought would come my way. Like they've said previously, life is what happens to you while you're busy making other plans. Uh, I, I like to focus my speech on focusing your plans in being prepared for what comes. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know when it's going to happen. You don't know how it's going to happen, but you do know what you want. You do know the direction you'd like to be in, but the question is, are you preparing yourself at this time for that opportunity? Are you? Are you busy? Do you move daily? Do you exercise your talents? Do you share your thoughts with your friends? I don't all the time. But I do know that I'm happiest when I'm moving. I'm happiest when I'm churning, when I'm creating, when I'm trying to find people to form partnerships and energies to combine to make something bigger than myself or what I'm doing happen. I rarely ever find myself in a room, including this one, where I'm the smartest person in the room. I love being around people that I can just sponge from and learn from. And I like finding ways that I can help them in their lives, and it helps me. And I don't know if it's a, a altru altruistic, I don't think so. I think it's somewhat uh, uh, selfish sometimes, but I do believe that energy is created as you begin to create it. So if you can identify for yourselves right now, are you on a path that you want to be on? You know, earlier we talked a lot about the, th the wonderment of the three-year-old child and about, about the excitement and the plans that you had for yourself when you were younger. Most of you know what excites you. Are you in a direction that's headed, are you headed in that direction? Are you down that path? You know, I, my father used to always tell me, just because you're on the right track doesn't mean you're headed in the right direction. I thought that was interesting. Uh, one of the real powerful lessons that I learned, and the reason that I, I, I chose the, the topic that I chose, is because when I was about 23, 24, uh, one of these people, one of these powerful men that I had met in, in the area, uh, became my mentor. And for uh, about 10 years, I spent tens of hours every week with that mentor, working with them, growing with them, and developing skill sets that I never had. This person was a very powerful business person. He was very uh, eloquent, excellent at writing letters, excellent at being organized, all the things that I was not very good at. And so I sat and I worked and I formed partnerships with him and I, and I formed trust that I had never had, not even with my own father. And I went down this path and, and I, I dedicated my energies and my heart to the things that we were doing because I was so excited that I was, I was able to leapfrog so many levels in my life because of uh, the wisdom and strength of, of my mentor. Fast forward a few years. All it takes sometimes is one business deal to go bad, one bad thing to happen personally, one death, one accident, and things begin to change for people. That happened to us. I am currently in heavy litigation with my former mentor. At 
some point, people's egos get challenged. Younger people like us decide, you know, I'm entitled to, to so much, and I deserve so much, and, I, and I've been good, and, and we want it, and we want it right now. That kind of sums my generation up. And a conflict gets created. And when communication exits, when egos get in the way, and when money's involved, oftentimes friendships and relationships that are the most important to you can go right out the door. And I remember for a while I was spiraling. And I was feeling the heat. And I was scared and nervous and anxious. Every time I went to a mailbox, there was going to be another letter from an attorney. There was going to be another phone call. There was something. But I looked in the mirror and I said, I have done nothing wrong. I've been honorable. I've been honest. But I've been bullied. And I'm being bullied. I understand that I put myself in that situation. I understand that sometimes it doesn't always work out. But people, people change sometimes. And what I'm challenging you to, to think and to believe is that you're not going to change. I'm challenging myself that, to, to think that. I want to be the man I want to be. I know what that is. I know what that means. And I think each and every one of you knows what that means. I can look in the mirror. I can hold my head high. And I'm going to go buy the book of awesome. <laughs> because I think that that is awesome. I, one of my famous quotes that I always tell my friends and family and, and even my students is, every time I wake up in Nashville and go to bed in San Diego, I think, what an amazing world we live in. I mean, it's, inc it's incredible. I, I literally get onto a jumbo jet and fly across the nation that used to take months and even years to get across. And I'm here in a night, and I get to, to, to share uh, some of my experiences with my students. I am astounded by the opportunities that we have. And I put myself into the situation with my mentor because I chose a dream that never really was mine. When I was young, I was in college. When I graduated, I got offered a, a contract to go play professional volleyball overseas. And some of the important people in my life talked to me and said, you know what, that's just not something that would be a good idea. You're going to have to reset at 30 if you do that. And you know what's going to happen when your athletic career is done? And you're probably not going to make the kind of money that a real uh, a high profile athlete would make. So get your MBA or go teach or whatever it was and, and, uh, and, and, and pass that opportunity. Not a day goes by in my life that I don't go, you know what? Wish I could rewind a little bit. Wish I could go for a year or two and experience that opportunity that had been presented to me. But I chose. And I made a conscious choice. I chose somebody else's dream for me. I chose somebody else's plan for me. And regardless of the successes, or the failures that I've had, I know in my heart that I sold out. It's hard to say. But I was young, and my eyes were big, and I'd never seen anything like Southern California. I'd never seen a golf course that you didn't need a tee time for because you just showed up and gave them a number and they billed you. I'd never seen anything like that. No. We showed up Saturday morning at 5.30 at our public, our public course, and we waited in line to see if they could squeeze us on. I became captive to a lifestyle that I never originally wanted. And so now moving forward, I have newfound vigor. I have a newfound excitement for what I get to do with the rest of my life. I get to teach, I get to learn, I get to share, I get to travel, and I get to create. And you never, ever, ever see an armored car following a hearse. You can't take it with you. I told my, my students the other day,
figure out your dreams, figure out your heart, and take care of your most basic needs. And then get busy. Move. Energize. Create. Talk. Share. I mean, we live in a culture, like Nadir was saying, we live in a culture where we can share our thoughts, our mind, our vision with millions of people in the blink of an eye. I have a device in my pocket that is smarter than I'll ever be. And that gives me access and gives me power to, to find and do the things that I would like to do with my life. I challenge you today, pick your heart, pick your dreams, follow them, and know that when you're doing the right things, no matter what people are saying to you or about you or for you, stand up, do the right thing, and get busy. Get busy. That's it. Thanks.